you should print my information, quote my rhyme, and keep me in between these New York and L.A. times. Just a victim of society. Chris the menace of March on the streets that evicted tenants. Disney, they just laid off Ike Perlmutter. This is huge news. If it happened eight years ago, from my understanding in 2015, the movies already became the Kevin Feige show. He wasn't limiting. Some of the stuff they talk about in this article is Doctor Strange had a budget crisis. He wasn't willing to give more money to this movie. And since then, things were allowed. Captain Marvel was allowed to be made, or rather I should say a, a lead that's female, was something that Ike Perlmutter was against. I can see the reason for that. For the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth movie. I could see the reasons, but then at some point you got to say, what's going on here? They we're excluding. That didn't register by the time they went to Doctor Strange, which was the 14th movie. Don't ask me how I know that off the top of my head. I know that because it was the 14th and the 28th was also Multiverse of Madness. So that factoid remained. Uh, we got the Black Panther movie because Ike Perlmutter was out the way. Ike was uh, blocking that. All right, so that's my perception of who this guy is. Not a positive one, movie-wise. Comic book-wise, hey, with him out the way, maybe we can get some, I don't know, new ideas that an 80-year-old wasn't willing to do. Maybe the guy who said, let's stop selling Fantastic Four comic books because Fox owns the film rights and, and pulled that out of spite. Maybe that guy shouldn't be there anymore. Maybe the guy who tried to really boost the Inhumans right around, what, 2013-ish, 14, 15, 16, was like, it's uh, the X-Men Schmexmen. Inhumans. Yeah. <laughs> Killed Wolverine. Wolverine did return. Or he was at an adamantium shell, and now he's out of the shell. Uh, Persephone brought him back. I don't Who cares? I think Jerry Duggan wrote that story. Ike Perlmutter's out. New York Times talks about it. The big news, let me just skim through some of this stuff, okay? The move was part of a company cost-cutting campaign and came after Mr. Perlmutter was part of an unsuccessful attempt to shake up Disney's board. That's true. Now, that's some behind-the-scenes stuff I don't much care for. I'm not the channel to go to to hear about how he was trying to change the structure. He was trying to get in another board member in here. That's what they'll talk about here. Chillmonger's not that interested in it. On Monday, Disney started to eliminate 7,000 jobs, about 4% of its global total, as part of $5.5 billion in cuts. Remember, they are $120 billion in debt, so that, that's significant. And the guys that they're removing are nobodies like Mr. Ike Perlmutter, who was just there to be there, there to be a board disturber. I don't know if he's doing anything creatively. I don't know what he brings. Except for I have money. If you can get rid of, if you can get gotten rid of, buy Ike Perlmutter. Go enjoy being 80 years old, not being involved with Disney. Uh, Perlmutter contacted the Disney board members and senior Disney executives six times from August to November to push for Mr. Pelt to join the board. That was a whole bunch of nonsense. Bob Iger thwarted that nonsense and they compromised on some sort of payout structure of the way Disney is going to do dividends, yada, yada, yada. Since then, Perlmutter's future at Disney has been a topic of water cooler debate inside the company, most employees concluding that his days were numbered. Okay, and then it so happened. Oh, and then also on Wednesday, Disney laid off Rob Steffens, the co-president of Marvel Entertainment. Not John Turitzen. Guys, he was the chief counsel for the division. Every time Kevin Feige was like, yo, I need counseling. Who am I going to go to? I'm going to go to John Turitzen. Yeah, he was so vital. That guy was, you thought I was serious. No. Um, with respect to these people who just lost their jobs, if you did something, I think I'd know you about what it is that you do. You're the co-president of Marvel, Rob Steffens? That just sounds like you're somebody, you're there to collect a paycheck. The only guy left is Dan Buckley. The president at Marvel Entertainment will remain and reports to Kevin Feige, who was the president of Marvel Studios. Kevin Feige is also the chief executive officer or what was it the cco of marvel some title like that that he got look buckley you're an older head you're a guy who's been in the comics industry so should i expect changes from you no i don't know anything about him you know who i will watch wes from thinking critical i believe that youtube channel may have more insight on dan buckley's um presence 
his uh, his role, what he's good for, what he's done in the past, because I don't know. I know when I read a comic, like if I open up a comic book from this week, Dan Buckley's name will be on the front page. It'll be C.B. Sobolski is the editor-in-chief, but Dan Buckley is the president of Marvel. As I say that, I literally do not see it. Maybe he, he wanted nothing to do with Monica Rambeau. But he's been in comic books. I've seen it before where a, a Marvel comic would have it. I could go through every comic here. Here. Ghost Light, Silver Surfer. This one will have Dan Buckley's. Skip 10 seconds if you don't want to wait for me to find it and, and you know. Bro, his name used to be on these things. Alex Maleev. He is no longer on these comics. What's that all about, huh? Hmm. This is fishy. Maybe because I'm looking for it and I'm skimming through fast, I can't find it. Maybe I should go through an older comic. Okay, here's Black Panther 15, which is no, not that much older. Come on, where are you at, Dan Buckley? Where are you at, Dan? Alex Ross did the cover, created by Jack Kirby Stan Lee. Hey, J Dan Buckley is no longer on Marvel Comics. You learn something new every day on Chillmonger. Let me go to one of these older comics. Here. <laughs> it's a new X-Men trade paperback collecting issues 16 to 32 back in like 06. Where you at, Dan Buckley? You've been in part of this company for a long time. I know I'll see your name here. Artist, penciler, inker, color artist. There you are, the president. It's been really small writing, but it does say President Dan Buckley here, along with everyone else's name, like um, uh, the editors and Axel Alonso, I think. No, Alan Fine. He was an executive for Joe Casada. C.B. Sobolski is editor-in-chief. Okay, we got to the bottom of that. Comics. <laughs> Dan Buckley is the president of Marvel. Will remain and report to Feige. Yada, yada, yada. Poor Mulder sold Disney in 2009 for four billion. So he got four billion dollars, and he was in some sort of like position of power in Disney where he earned a little bit more money. Did he earn four billions worth sitting on the board? No, because uh, like they said earlier, they're only losing and shaving five and a half billion dollars by getting rid of these seven thousand jobs. So I don't think he really got a billion millions. Sure, which has got to be nice. I think he was the guy who had toys. He, he was a toy guy. He gained control of the superior company in the 90s and greatly expanded its merchandising business by licensing properties like X-Men and Spider-Man 2 movie studios. That's good. That was cool. They didn't have Marvel Studios, a separate entity on themselves where they just fund and everything was within the house. They did not have that. He did something smart, getting Fox on board with the X-Men. Great decision to get uh, the Sony on board with, with Spider-Man, saved this company. So we have to give our respect to that. Marvel might not exist without that decision. It was a cool decision, a smart decision to make. It expanded the brand because live action films are probably the greatest form of entertainment, the most well-respected, the highest profile. So kudos, recognizing who the big talents were, utilizing the catchy Spider-Man, does whatever a spider can, song from the animated show, of course, and all the other animated appearances, realizing there's a fan base for this guy, boom. I'm done giving him credit. I'm just not trying to understate how valuable that was. Perlmutter involvement with Marvel as a whole has greatly diminished over the years. Mm -hmm. He has not been involved with Marvel movies since 2015. I just told you all that. By the end, Perlmutter's job was limited to business-like comics publishing, which yeah, it did generate from 40 million to 60 million in sales annually. That's a large, from 40 million to 60 million. It's so much money to not know what the actual answer. 40 million, it's either 40 million or 60. Why can't we get a pinpoint on how much money is generated? And then yeah, for perspective, 40 to 60 million, right? Disney gets about 83 billion in total revenue. It's not even 1% of Disney. Marvel Comics is kind of expendable when you put it like that. Their theme parks, sure. Their movie studios, absolutely. Or if you just separate movie studios, Lucasfilm, Marvel, and all the other... Oh, Pixar is a big one, right? <laughs> Avatar is a studio within itself. How do they have Avatar? That's so cheap. They have Avatar. 
when you think of that and you look at what Marvel Comics brings in for the company, it's like, yeah, let's just do this thing. Let's keep this thing around. I'm saying they the movies rely on this. So if I'm Iger or whoever it is in, at working at Disney, I should always consider the comics and the small little $40 million that they generate, I should consider it as the foundation for potential billions coming out of the movies. So never get rid of it. That's how I would think, but I'm not everyone there. I'm actually looking at it like, you know what? We don't even need to get this 40, what's a measly $40 million out of the comic book industry. Instead, let's cut comic books prices from $4 a comic to $3 a comic. Let's expand the audience. Let's do things that keep comics around. And yes, we'll, lo- we'll make less money, of course. But all that money will be made back up when it comes to the movies. Let's pay the creators, comic book geniuses, what they're worth. Let's get Matt Fraction back on board with Marvel and Ed Brubaker. These guys are alive. And they're not working at the company. Maybe the relationship formed or, or scorned or the burned by Ike Perlmutter. Maybe new, those guys will be back because after Ike Perlmutter, maybe Dan Buckley thinks differently. Maybe he gets rid of Akira Yoshida. Yoshida. Maybe he gets rid of a lot of the people who the prior guys have beefs with. Brian Michael Bendis might be back, who I consider a great writer. Shut up, Mike, if you're watching. Uh, Okay, he was involved in Marvel game licensing. That's another big one. Certain consumer products and superhero arena shows. I don't know what a superhero arena show is, but he did it. Marvel Entertainment was based in New York. Yeah, they're back in, they're in LA now. Disney arguably allowed Perlmutter to keep a a fief, a fife, Long after it made financial sense to do so, he is a significant Disney shareholder, and there was a sense of obligation. Without him, Disney would not have Marvel. I guess so. I guess that makes sense to me. Even George Lucas has shares, but he's not a board member or nothing like that. He's just kind of uninvolved. Perlmutter's zealousness for corporate frugality in service of profit is well known in the entertainment business. Whatever. Just a little bit of talking trash about Ike Perlmutter, some slander, slander stuff about Ike Perlmutter. Isaac Perlmutter, the first. Chillmonger out. Not big news. Comic book wise, cool. But we'll see what happens. I hope relationships are formed again with the top tier of writers. Let's get James Tynan the fourth up in here. Let's pay them extra. Let's pay them more. Let's get top artists. Rob them from that DC company. Give Jonathan Hicken more than one comic book. <laughs> I, I wonder, man. I wonder what Dan Buckley's role will be. Now that he's like in charge without Ike Perlmutter, does he go, all right, now, okay, free comic book day is going to be about the MCU or some, you know, some genius strategy like that to attract new readers. Who, who, who would have thunk that free comic book day being a comic which takes place in the Marvel Cinematic Universe who would, who would have thought of an idea like that to bring in new customers? Maybe Dan Buckley's the guy. 